Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. I wanted to do one final Q&A before I start dental school, which is in about a week. It's a Sunday when I'm filming this, and one week from now I will be starting dental school, which is so crazy. If you didn't know, um, updates, it's going to be online for our summer term. University of Michigan's incoming D1s start with a half summer term before our fall term. Pretty much every other dental school though starts at the end of August, which is when our fall term will begin. So we're online for summer and hopefully fully in person in the fall, at least partially is what we know as of now. Make sure you guys subscribe to be updated on all the things happening with dental school and my summer term experience and everything. I would love if you guys followed along. If you are a returning subscriber but don't watch every video, I do just wanna say thank you guys so much for a thousand subscribers. That is so so exciting. That's truly a dream and it's never been about the number or subscribers or anything for me But the more subscribers you get the more um, features of YouTube you're able to use So I'm excited to have the community tab to make text posts out to you guys when necessary If anything crazy is happening with a week and I can't get a video up or something So I'm really excited to have a thousand plus of you following along and hopefully more I don't know my goal was to hit that before I started dental school and I did so that's so exciting Hey, sorry for the long intro. I'm going to be answering some questions. I always post my Q&A is as like a question feature on my Instagram page. So make sure you also follow my Instagram. It's just Haley Schultz underscore YT. And then I also have an Instagram for my dental school podcast um, that includes me talking to you all. Sometimes I have guests that are dental students, sometimes pre-dental students that I feel are really unique, and then also dentists. So it's a really great platform if you are pre-dental or interested in dentistry or even pre-health. I think there's a lot of tangible tips that you could get from it. But... <laughs> All the promo said and done, I have seven questions I'm going to be answering just to kind of close the chapter on college and move forward into my post-grad life, dental school, and everything of that nature. So this is going to kind of close the chapter on college and let us move forward. So one submission was really cute. She said, not a question, just wanted to say good luck, smiley face. So that was very nice. I appreciate those as well. I'm going to start with the one question about college and then we'll get into the other stuff. So... Um, this question says, how do you deal with college math? I have to take a diagnostic calc test. I'm not good at math. I remember taking the diagnostic test for MSU for math placement, and to be honest, I placed into pre-calc for my first semester fall, and then I took calc one in the spring of my freshman year, and then I took stats for scientists fall of my sophomore year. So that covered all of my math for my major, and it was just fine if you can't place into calc one or something. Just kind of Take that as a sign, like I took the test twice. I felt that starting in Math 116 at MSU was fine because then I was gonna be more prepared when I got to the college level calc because in high school, I had taken pre-calc as well. So I pretty much retook it in college, but I think that that brought me more up to speed and math isn't my greatest subject either. So really my only advice for math is practice, 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 do practice tests and go to office hours. My professor for office hours would give us a bunch of practice problems that were super similar to the ones on the exams. So office hours are my best tip for math and rep repetition and practice and practicing the same type of problem a bunch of times, then moving on to a new style of problem. And then the next question is about interviews and then the rest are pretty much all about dental school stuff. So this one says, how to come up with stories to tell at your interviews? Stories as in the sense of not like facetious stories that you're making up, but um, a lot of people's interview advice is to show them characteristics about yourself rather than saying, oh, I'm very hardworking. You can say, so this one semester I took 15 credits with three science classes and also had to hold down a part-time job because I had to pay rent for myself that semester or something. That would be an example of a story that shows you're hardworking without you even needing to tell the interviewer. So the question saying how to come up with these stories, I think just reflect on the characteristics that you want to show your interviewer and then again reflect, um, let's say you write down 10 characteristics, five characteristics. Then go from there and say, okay, what have I done throughout my undergrad experience or if you're post-grad applying like after a gap year, what have I done that would show them that I am this characteristic, that I am um, empathetic for patients, that I am hardworking, you know? And then also kind of flip-flopped that. You can also just think about what are some unique experiences, some experiences that make me a good applicant, and then just make sure that in the interview, if they ask you something like, what's the time you worked in a team? Don't just say, oh yeah, like I played IM sports. 
like you could say that if you want to expand on it and make it good but you could say oh so we had this one experience on this medical service trip I went on where um, all of our clinic staff work together like something like that like you can take a simple question that could be answered oh my physics lab group or my I'm sports team and then leave it at that but you can expand upon it or do a different type of answer that's a little bit more I don't know, just shows you as a person a little bit more and gives them a better idea of all the cool experiences you've had. So you need to twist a simple question for a more explanative, I don't think that's a word, answer um, that's going to show them more about you and tell them about these great experiences that you've had. So coming up with them is just reflecting on the experiences that you've had and what you want to highlight to the interviewer. This one says, what do the four years of dental school cover subject-wise? So... Generally speaking, every dental school is a four-year program except for University of the Pacific, and I believe Roseman, Rosman, I don't know, I didn't apply there, is also planning on transitioning to a three-year program, but all the other dental schools are four years. And generally speaking, the way it works is your first and second year are pretty coursework heavy, so you're taking sciences related to the body, so you could still be learning about the biochemistry, the microbiology, the immunology, the anatomy, the physiology of the GI tract, and then you're going to move on to a different system in the body, and then you're also going to be doing head and neck anatomy at some schools. Some schools will do full body anatomy with a cadaver lab. Um, you'll also be doing dental related classes as well from your sciences. You're also going to be doing practice management, um, patient interaction type classes, classes about dental anatomy classes about actual dental skills, so working in a simulation lab where you work on fake teeth and sometimes um, real teeth that are donated to you from dentist office in the area that were extracted from patients. Sometimes you work on real teeth and then you also do like molds and other basically like fake, temporary, whatever you want to call it, um, practices before you move on to real patients and most schools are going to start seeing patients at the beginning of your third year um, for actually treating them, for you being the, pre the provider of care. But um, that being said, many schools you get into clinic with physical patients a lot earlier than that. You might be assisting the third and fourth years, you might be doing cleanings, you might be helping with x-rays, things like that, and then you also have the opportunity to go in and shadow at different clinics in the school when you have free time. If you have free time, um, you can shadow in the different specialty clinics or you can just, again, go offer to assist outside of the assisting that might be required of you. So it's kind of a general overview of the coursework and the balance between sciences and actual dentistry. And then you have requirements that are different at every school, again, for when you're in clinic of certain, whether it's a number of points awarded for each type of procedure and you need to reach 2,000 or 500, whatever it is. Or it might be you have to do six crowns 200 filling like whatever it is um, They just have a different way of measuring your requirements to make sure that you're going to pass your boards and most schools are competency based not numbers based so they're trying to make sure that you're competent at performing this procedure rather than you did a hundred of them you're good because that doesn't even necessarily mean that you're going to be good so there's just a kind of a unique way of measuring your skills to make sure that you will be prepared when you graduate at the end of your four years to go right into practice that's one thing about dentistry different than medicine and other healthcare fields is that once you graduate with your dds or dmd after four years you are allowed and able to go buy a practice work at a practice work full on on patients, but you can also go and do a general dentistry residency program, which are AEGD and GPRs, um, or you can apply to a specialty program, which would be like periodontics, endodontics, prosthodontics. And um, one thing that's nice that a lot of schools do are outreach programs or externships. In your fourth year, most of the schools I interviewed at, and I assume probably a lot of the dental schools because I only had five interviews, um, and there's like 48 or 49 dental schools, something along that lines but you do a few weeks, anywhere from, I don't know, two to 10 weeks at a real clinic away from the dental school and you work on patients by yourself and you get checked by a dentist very rarely, like you're practicing on your own as if you are a real dentist and that's a really great way to build up your confidence for when you graduate and work on patients without being checked by a clinic supervisor, which when you're working on patients at the dental school, every little thing that you do, an actual dentist, a clinic supervisor has to come check off each step that way you're not providing any care that isn't 
great, you know? So that was a very long answer, but that is kind of what you do in dental school. I do want to apologize before the next question if there is a lot of background noise. It's the middle of the afternoon on a Sunday, people are doing yard work, dogs are walking, it's a little noisy, but um, the next question is how did you find roommates? How did you meet others in your class? So like I said at the beginning of the video, we're starting online, so this is quite different than a normal incoming D1 summer. They have a lot of events that you can go to to meet your class, but I know that virtually they're going to try to do that as much as they can, and now that the state of Michigan is opening up, I'm personally making the effort to meet up with a few of my classmates in like smaller group settings because I'm fortunate to live about a 45-minute drive from Ann Arbor, which is where my dental school is that um, I can go there and meet up with people and then come home for the evening, you know? So I'm gonna do my best to meet up with people in safely small groups and everything, but um, they always make a Facebook page for your incoming class that you can join and start meeting people and adding people there. Um, I've been in that since December when I got in and then someone also made a group me for our class um, and then we're also gonna have a Slack um, platform to communicate on as well once school starts. Um, but those are kind of all of the communication platforms and the school does their best to try to get you to know each other. I know that all the schools I interviewed at had different ways that they did that, whether it was bar crawls, whether it was events after classes at the school, whether it was events with upperclassmen, that way you can kinda get advice and get acclimated. The dental schools do really want you to be successful and feel like you have a support system and friends around you because you're going to be with these people for four years. Our class size is 109, so um, that's like more like a high school class size or maybe for some of you even smaller than high school. So I think it's very realistic to know everyone's name and to make some really solid friendships. So I'm really looking forward to that. My personal roommate situation is that I'm going to be living in a two bedroom, one bathroom apartment with my friend Amanda. We met at MSU in undergrad in pre dental club and we've been kind of just like school friends and in our last year we got a little bit closer. She graduated after the fall semester so she wasn't there in my last semester but I'm looking forward to living with her and I think we have a lot in common so that's one reason I went with her. If there was no one from my undergrad that I really vibed with then I would have posted in the Facebook group and found a roommate that way or if you really want to pay the higher rent you can just go ahead and get a single apartment or studio for your first year and then decide if you want to do roommates. Okay, so these next few are about dental school again. So this one says, how are you preparing for online classes? I don't think I'm doing much yet. I think in about two weeks when I probably first post my first week of dental school vlog, um, you'll know a little bit more about how I'm preparing, but I'm using different templates on my iPad that I'm making in advance for scheduling and planning. I can put some screenshots up here of what they look like, but basically making sure I'm able to be really organized and know what's happening every day because you're going to be having a different, like your Monday isn't always exactly the same as the Monday the next week. So I want to make sure that I know our schedule very well in advance, like every Sunday, make sure I know what's going on Monday through Friday that week. And also be looking ahead for as an exam in one week, in two weeks, when is everything happening? So making sure I'm very organized in that regard. And then for the fact that I'm going to be sitting at a desk from 8 to 5 doing these classes, I have blue light glasses which I think will be helpful. I can link the pair that I have below, they're from the brand Hip Optical. And um, I also have a discount code because it was a sponsored video. So if you guys want that discount code, I'll link the video below as well. But um, I'm going to just make sure that my room is like a place where I feel very productive. I've been working on that. I think I'm gonna buy a new desk lamp that makes my room a little bit brighter and easier for me to work in. I'm gonna make sure I take breaks, try to go for walks, try to exercise, meal prepping, eating really good meals, just making sure that I can have as much of a routine and be as normal and be as organized and prompt as possible and then we will see how much free time I have and what I can do with that to keep myself happy and sane and like I said a few questions earlier that I am trying to meet up with classmates and develop some kind of normal social interactions with my classmates. If you want to know which classes I'm taking this summer term, I will put the vlog where I talk about it in the cards above and also in the description. Um, but the two questions left, one is, are you nervous to start? <laughs> yes, so nervous. Um, I was having a really hard time a few weeks ago. Um, I made a podcast about comparison and at about like 
20 minutes in or so I kind of open up on that experience so I will link that specific podcast episode in the description of this if you want to listen and hear me expand more about the anxieties and struggles I was having and how I've been kind of working through them but yes I'm very nervous to start and I think that once I'm through a summer term I'll kind of make a video reflecting on it and touch on that more then so that I have kind of more of a holistic view of those struggles that I was nervous about and I can give you guys the yes or no, those were real fears and like did they come true or was it fine kind of thing. I want to wait till I have more perspective to give basically before I make a video about it. But yes, I'm very nervous, experienced a bit of imposter syndrome, feeling like I wasn't capable, but I'm doing better this week, which is why I'm filming a video. I wouldn't film a video when I'm not in a good headspace. So I am doing better, but yes, I'm very, very nervous. And we're going to end with a positive question that says, what are you looking forward to with dental school? So I think I'm most looking forward to, again, I answered this in a couple videos ago, I think, but what I'm looking forward to most with dental school is overall, like all four years, I think I'm most looking forward to the people and the relationships that I will form with my classmates, but also with faculty at the dental school, with um, different dentists and care providers in the area and just overall, I feel like University of Michigan has so many opportunities for dental students with clubs, with all the specialty clinics, that there's just so much that I can dive into and get really involved in. So I'm just excited to see how I grow as a person and the friendships that I can make that I know from everyone I've talked to that's a dentist that graduated 10, 15, 20 years ago, that their dental school friends are like family to them. They're still so close. So I'm really looking forward to finding my little tribe of people and doing dental school to the best of my ability, trying to make the most of everything that is offered to me. So that is everything for this q and I hope you all enjoyed it and I'm so excited to be moving into the dental school chapter of my life and I'm excited that you all want to watch and experience that journey with me. So I will talk to you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching.